All right, what's going on everybody? My name is Kyle Welcher. Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you clicking on this video. So what we're doing today, you probably saw it in the title and the thumbnail, going over all these custom built rods that I built. We're at a time of the year now where everything is changing very, very rapidly. So I'm picking up new techniques constantly because some things are kind of fizzling out and some things are coming on strong. So I'm trying to match the perfect rod with the perfect reel, perfect bait. So in this video right here, I'm gonna go through all my rods that I have personally hand built. Every single rod that I've got I built myself this year that's really really cool but first let me tell y'all this video right here is sponsored by top fishing deals if you're trying to if everybody's always looking I shouldn't say if you're trying to always looking to save as much money as we can on fishing tackle at least I know I am go check out topfishingdeals.com they have the best prices from all the stores you already know and I, they just have all the sale items from every single website on the internet all of their sale items are brought together in one place. You go to Top Fishing Deals and see everything that's on sale. And it's not just fishing lures. They have they have some boots sometimes, some clothing, all kinds of stuff on there. Just go in there and check out, look around on Top Fishing Deals, save yourself some money. But we're gonna get into this. These rods right here, I got them laid everywhere. I got them all in here. I got them laid in the passenger rod locker thing. I got them all on the front deck. All of these rods right here, I'm gonna start off by saying, I use point blank rod blanks. That is just a straight, carbon fiber or graphite rod blank that's what I use and then I use all Fuji guides so whenever you see me using any of the guides I use they're all made by Fuji all the real seats cork everything like that is Fuji and then the blanks are point blank rod blanks so let's get into it I'm gonna show you the ones that I use I pretty much keep it very very simple I use the main length that I use is a seven foot three and usually my main rod is a seven foot three medium heavy. I can use it from everything from a smaller jig. You don't wanna flip a huge jig on a medium heavy rod, but smaller jigs all the way down, buzz baits, chatter baits, spinner baits. I mean, I've even threw a big square bill on a seven foot three medium heavy, you know, if I'm around some super heavy cover and I wanna move the fish pretty quickly. So I keep it pretty simple. I use a seven foot six, I use a seven foot three, and I use a seven foot spinning rod. Other than that, that's pretty much it. But I'm going to show you what I use and how I tweak the rods a little bit different for technique to technique and what I kind of use the medium heavy or the heavy or the medium for. So let's dig into it. I'm going to open the rod locker up, get me out of variety, and then show y'all. Okay, so everybody that owns more than one bass fishing rod knows that if you lay them down within 10 foot of each other, they will instantly get tangled. So I got everything organized right now. We'll see how it stays. But anyways, number one rod, the bread and butter. The bulk of my arsenal is a seven foot three medium heavy, always has been, and as far as I'm concerned, always will be. So this is two of the same exact rods right here. I'm gonna just kind of show you what I did differently on these two rods. So these rods are gonna be 100% straight fluorocarbon rods all the time. I'm never gonna put braid on either one of these two rods. So I use the same exact guides on both the rods. I'll go ahead and show you the guide that I, I used as my stripper guide. This is actually a fairly new concept from Fuji. It's a reverse you know double foot stripper guide and it only comes in a number six this is all titanium guides and i go straight from a number six to a number four on all of my bait casting fluorocarbon rods so this is one right here this is the hook keeper i like for jigs and i'll show you this is a seven foot three medium heavy rod i use the same cork same butt cap same split grip reel seat on every single rod that i have and like i said i use everything i use these seven foot three medium heavies for everything from a small jig chatter bait buzz bait spinner bait big square bill like a 2.0 i mean i couldn't even tell you i throw a big bigger swim bait on it sometimes not like a six or seven inch but like a four or five inch flip around a little bit lighter weight like this right here so i'm gonna show you this is one of the options you can do whenever you're building your own custom rods this is a little bit different hook keeper this is more of a flipping style hook keeper you never have to take your hook out of your bait and you can just slide your hook up on the hook keeper and it holds your rod right there as opposed to this kind of D-loop style right here, you have to hook the hook actually through. So if you're flipping a bait, you have to take the hook out of the bait, flip it through to have it, or else leave it hanging off the end of your rod, which gets tangled up and dirty. So seven foot three medium heavy go-to. If you see me throw anything, it's most likely on this, everything from a buzz bait to a small jig. So go ahead and move these over here to the done pile. Okay, next up, Every once in a while you do have a, a bait you want to throw that's just a little bit too light for maybe a medium heavy. So I don't like to throw 10 pound test on a medium heavy rod. I feel like I break it a little bit too often. It's cost me a lot of money over the years throwing 10 pound test on a medium heavy rod. So I like to go down, have a few rods built. Let me say this real quick. Medium heavies, I wrap them all in purple. I love the way they turn out. They look so freaking good to me. Wrap them all in purple. This seven foot three inch medium right here 
all these rods are fast action. Fast action just helps me casting. I like to go down or up in a power depending on how I want the rod to load and how easily I want the rod to load. So same thing, reverse double foot guide from Fuji, new concept. And this right here is a light open hook. So I don't need, a, I don't need to set the hook very hard on this. What I do need is a rod that's gonna load and be a little bit forgiving because I got pretty much a fast trigger. So if I'm throwing 10 pound test out there, fish bites it, I can't help but you know straight up try to jack them. So I throw 10 pound test on this. This is a seven foot three medium, like I already said, straight up murdered out black. This is a rod that I'm gonna throw, you know, floating trick worms on, anything that's super light. I might throw a little prop bait around on it, a pop R, and then obviously my little Kitek right here. So anything that's just a little bit too light for a medium heavy. I'm gonna throw on this right here. Now, as far as the other side of the spectrum goes, there are techniques that are just a little bit, need a little bit more power than a medium heavy. So see right here, they already got tangled. Look at how easy that is to resolve. So this right here are my seven foot three heavy rods. I've got five of them built. I wrap them in red. These things look, I'm talking about, to me, they turn out absolutely beautiful. You can see the way all the, the wraps turned out. If you watch my videos very long, you know I have an addiction. And if you have not watched my videos very long, I appreciate you stopping by and watching. So anyways, this dude right here, have an absolute addiction to throwing him. So same thing on these, I use, you know, the pretty much same first guide, a little bit different hook keepers on some of them, as, and then some different hook keepers on, depending on what I want to use. So this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you right now, since I have braid on this rod. The whole purpose in this new concept of guide right here is because you can see that your line comes off your reel at a certain angle. And what you don't wanna have happen is, you don't want your guide to be pulling their line down because it's gonna create a pinch point. And you don't want your line to be pushing the guide up because it's gonna have a pinch point. So if, if your guide is pushing the line down towards the blank because your, your guide's too short, what that's gonna do is it's gonna make the line come down, pile up, have big flops and big waves in the line because it can't come through at the uh, velocity it wants to come through at, it's gonna slap the blank. So this new concept from Fuji, you can feel it when you cast. It's absolutely unbelievable. But like I said, seven foot three heavy. This is the rod I'm gonna throw swim jigs on. I'll do a lot more flipping on. I, I will see myself throwing a smaller frog on this rod right here, skipping it up around docks and stuff like that. Throwing a horny toad. Anything that's just a little bit heavier than you know something that you would throw on a seven foot three medium heavy. So this is just a little bit more stout of a rod. Y'all seen me on the swim jig fish, I snatch a pound and a half or clean over the boat regularly. Now that's not always good to do, but that just means this rod has so much power. This rod weighs 3.4 ounces, completely built, without the reel obviously. That's what this rod weighs. That is unbelievable. You see I keep the same cork, same grip, wrap these suckers in red. Some of my favorite rods, now let, these are the other two I have. I keep a few different color untamed tackle punisher swim jigs on the front deck at all times. This is the one I've been catching on the best recently. That's just a black. This thing has a five volt owner jungle hook in it. So I need a rod that's got a little bit more power to it. So move on straight from there to the other rods that I kind of used as to as specialty rods. Y'all can see right here, this right here is my baby. This is what I absolutely love to do, especially in the post spawn, I love to flip. You can see the hook keeper I use for that one is my favorite flipping hook keeper. You never have to take your bait, your hook out of the bait, and it's bam, just like that. Same guide, but this rod right here is a seven foot six, heavy, fast, point blank. Blank, I obviously same cork, use same cork and everything. I like for everything to be extremely consistent. Whenever I pick up one rod, put it down and pick up another rod, I want them to feel identical so I can make extremely accurate casts with every single rod on the front deck. If y'all seen me fishing for a while now, you know that one of my biggest deals is accuracy. I like to get in places where I feel like most guys can't get quite as easily. So. I like for all my rods to feel extremely identical so I can pick one up, interchange them, and just make super accurate casts. Now, this rod right here is always gonna have fluorocarbon on it, and with all my fluorocarbon rods, I went straight from a number six reverse double foot down to a number four guide to run all the way up to the tip. So fluorocarbon doesn't retain as much water as something like a braid does. So this right here is a very thick braid. This is the K9 60 pound eight strand braid. That's the one that I throw a frog on all the time. I, and what happens to braid is it soaks up a little bit of water, it picks up debris a little bit worse. So with this rod, same double foot guide, I went to a number five guide instead of a number four, it's an entire millimeter bigger. So what that does, it just helps the line flow through there a little bit better whenever it swells or picks up any kind of particles. It just, whenever I use a super uh, small guide, 
for big heavy braid, I can feel the drag that the guides put on the rod. So that's one of the ways I tweaked it. You can see the hook keeper that I made right here. That's the frog hook keeper that I like. You just put the hook in there, it holds it. So the problem with the other style hook keeper, sometimes you'll hit waves or something, your bait will bounce out from under it and it'll be just laying on the front deck getting tangled up with other ones. So this rod right here, is just, this hook keeper just kind of holds your bait a little bit better. Now, last but not least, this rod seriously kind of changed the way that I fish because I'm so in love with it. If y'all know, watch me for very long, you know I hate throwing a dang spinning rod. Let me grab this sucker right here. But this spin rod right here, I've absolutely fell in love with, and I think I can go ahead and say that Hunter has as well. This thing is absolutely phenomenal. I'm gonna show you the, the line that I use on this thing. I get that a lot. I use 20 pound K9 uh, nine strand braid, and what I do is I tie that to a eight pound 100% fluorocarbon leader all the way up to a 12 pound 100% fluorocarbon leader. So I change my leader based on the size of the fish and what kind of cover I'm fishing. So I go anywhere from an eight to a 12. Now the biggest thing with the leader is, so it's not always about the how heavy the cover is, how heavy of the leader you want to go to. If you're fishing for big, three pound fish or bigger, I want to go up in leader size for the main reason that whenever they eat this bait, it's usually down their throat and the line will rub on their teeth while you're fighting them. So eight pound line will really, really get very, very brittle on them fish's teeth faster than obviously a 12 wheel. So I like to go up based on you know, the size of the fish that I'm catching more than the cover that I'm catching because their teeth is what really does a number on it. This rod, seven foot medium light extra fast. What I did, I've always used a seven foot medium fast and I didn't ever feel like the rod would really load the way that I want it to load whenever I'm throwing like a drop shot or if I'm throwing like an open hook wacky rig or something like that. So I dropped down a power. So the power is the amount of force it takes to load a rod. So like an extra heavy, it's gonna take a lot of weight to load that rod but a light is gonna take almost no weight to load that rod. So I dropped down a power and I went up an action. So I went to an extra fast and a lower power. So what that does, it makes the rod load a little bit better. It loads about like a medium fast wood or, or yeah, probably. But what, what it does, it's a faster action rod which helps me get better skips. So whenever I, I barely have to move my wrist at all and this rod loads and I can fire this wacky rig under a dock. And that's what I built this rod specifically for is a wacky rig. This is, the same, this is a newer concept, KR concept, spinning guides from Fuji. They have a long foot. As you can see, they're still really, really long, but they have a little bit smaller insert, a little bit smaller ring So on these guides, and they, they choke down very, very quickly. And you can see whenever you're casting this, your spinning rod line comes out with big loops. And what we're trying to do is get the guide to contain the loops and turn it into a, like a straight line coming out the end of the rod. And you can see by the time it gets to this third guide right here, all the loops are out of the, out of the line and it's going straight, nothing but positive energy straight out the tip of the rod. So these guys are, make a absolute huge difference. I never knew a rod could make me fall in love with a fishing technique as much as this one has. So this, the guides I, I used on this is a number 16 to a number eight to a 5.5 and then five guides all the way out to the tip. So that's what I went to, 16, eight, 5.5. And this is the Shimano Stratic HG these are, I don't know the exact name of this, but it's called the FL or something. It's the brand new one. This sucker is an absolute beast. I got all these reels right here from Sumlin Outdoors in Columbus, Georgia. They have the best selection of bait casters or spinning rods of anywhere around here. When something new comes out, they always have it first. But anyways, and you can see, I use that same little, this is actually called a drop shot hook keeper. It just, I, I like that for my spin rods just because it holds the hook and I don't have to mess with the worm or anything like that. So basically, that's my rods. I keep everything extremely simple. Most of the stuff that you see me throw is on a 7 foot 3 medium heavy. I just deviate based on specialty rods. So that's it. If you like the video, leave a like, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button because the tournament season is about to get back rolling and we're about to start back traveling. So hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss anything. I'm about to go fishing. See y'all. All right, guys. So a couple things that I forgot to mention. If you're going to sit there and just talk for 10 minutes straight, it's hard to remember everything. But a couple things I forgot to mention. I put these rod sleeves on all my rods, and then it just helps everything going in and out. These are the best ones that I have found. If you want to get those type of rod sleeves or anything else, go to upriver.com. Upriver, they gave me a discount code, KW10, but they upped it to help you guys out a little bit. You get 20% off discount code KW10. Another thing, the braid or the line, the fluorocarbon that I'm using is all K9 fishing line. If you want to go check out K9, I have a code for there as well. It's just KW. I think it gets 10% off. So KW on 
K9, K9 Fishing and KW10 on Upriver Fishing. See y'all guys.